The Anointing of My Army Bride, shared on December 2, 2022. Dear brothers and sisters, while studying with the Lord on November 23, 2022, His Holy Spirit laid this message on my heart for His Army Bride. Preface I will preface this message by saying that I am aware that many of us have been working pretty much around the clock for years now even managing with little sleep per day, studying the scriptures as if we were taking a university exam, interceding for the lives that are at stake of falling into hell, fasting from various things to gain greater focus on spiritual matters. We have learned how to cover ourselves with the Lord's blood, wear our spiritual armor, resist Satan's attacks towards us, rebuke ungodly doctrines, teach those who are perishing, pray unceasingly, admonish in love, prepare our physical and spiritual homes, listen intently to the voice of the Master, love others as ourselves. So many things to attend to. I know I have barely had any leisure time. May His name be forever praised. The Holy Spirit has placed such burdens on, of souls on my heart. Too many are suffering in their bodies, have lost their homes, jobs, families, and friends. Others are struggling financially, emotionally, and spiritually. All the while, death has indeed enlarged its mouth and continues to claim more souls daily. May the Lord have mercy. The spiritual warfare is fierce. We have been called to stand in the gap, to function in the anointing of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the children towards the fathers, and the hearts of the fathers towards the children. Satan's plan is in full swing, and it will actually accelerate, pushing many more over the precipice before the Lord will step in and lock him up for a thousand years. The Holy Spirit continues to knock on the doors of hearts. Opportunities are being offered to repent, but are being declined. John 3.18 He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. James 4.4 4. He adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. A while back the Lord gave me a vision in which I saw many people walking backwards towards a precipice, backwards because they have no idea the path they are on, but are devoted to it. They don't care where they are going. They just want to be on it with everyone else. They think and claim they are going to heaven, but invest no time in cultivating their intimacy with the Lord. Message As the Lord's army has been molded in their secret places to attend to end times needs, at times we look around and it's hard not to get overwhelmed or feel weary. We are the ones who will bring in Father's harvest, who will be assisting the multitudes during their pressing and crushing times, who will be bringing about the reformation of man's doctrines into God's doctrine. We are the ones who will battle against the demons, the fallen ones, who will release many from evil spirits. We will go out to heal from many diseases, restore the blind their sight, to raise the dead back to life. We will proclaim freedom for the captives and administer the safe havens. We are the sons of God, whom the creation has been waiting in eager expectation to see revealed. We will sabotage many of Satan's plans as will fight valiantly with Father's spiritual weapons. We will be in charge of building the Lord's third temple, not the one made by human hands as it was in the time of Zerubbabel and Joshua, but the one that will be constructed by His Spirit through His witnesses. 
We are aware of many who are rejecting his narrow path, living in a state of blindness and refuse sound counsel. We are aware of those who have taken the abomination injection and need to be told that Jesus can fully cleanse them. We know of the many we need to reach in remote areas and have never heard about the Lord. If we ever take a step back and wonder how the Lord will tackle all these things in such a short time, it's easy to become overwhelmed. If you are one who has grown weary of waiting, who may be feeling compelled to take matters into your own hands, if you may be feeling anxiety on how you're going to keep your mission, if you're seeing your enemies rolling up around you and are wondering when is God going to intervene, the Lord wants to remind you today to wait upon Him to be fully established. 1 Samuel 13 Although it may seem that our missions may be nearly impossible to accomplish, know that it's not you who will be doing things, but rather the Holy Spirit living within you. Wait upon Him to fill you so you can move under His divine anointing. At times, people around us do not accept the message we have for them. They may not wish to hear about God's judgments. As a consequence, they might lash out by calling us names, scoff at us, mock us. They may even wish us dead. Remember that Jesus was one such prophet who always spoke the truth in love and was not welcomed. His worst enemies turned out to be the religious leaders of his time, who thought they were not so knowledgeable about the ways of God and proved not to have any of godly wisdom. The Lord has made me notice in Haggai 1 how his people had renovated their paneled houses and neglected Father's house. These are the ones who may have physically prepared for end times, but have failed to prepare spiritually and therefore need assistance on how to do that. In Haggai 2 verse 4, the Lord repeats three times to be strong, for He is with us. Do not become overburdened by the tasks at hand. The Lord will go ahead of us to clear the way. He is calling those who have received the anointing of Zerubbabel and Joshua to be strong in the building of his temple. He knows the work ahead is great, his harvest plenty, and that few are the laborers. But he is promising us today that he will be with us every step of the way. Praise God. He is once more going to shake the heavens and the earth in the nations. This is already happening. We can feel this move in the Spirit, and not just us. Every day there are more people becoming uncomfortable in their normal state as the seas churn. They see things around the world continuing in a downward spiral. They might not know exactly what comes next, but uneasiness keeps building up. One fears for the lives of their children, who may be in the prime of their youth, or their little ones, and wonder, what sort of world will they grow up in? They may not have the knowledge on how to fend for themselves, but we know that our time to set off is here. The glory of Solomon's temple will be by far outdone by the glory of this latter spiritual temple. Even in Jesus' times, his disciples boasted about their temple. Yet Jesus said that not one stone of the old temple would be left upon another. We know he was referring to his body, but he was also referring to the abolishment of the old church systems that are funded on the doctrines of men. In this era, God's laws are taking root into the hearts of his people, as Father is engraving them upon us. We have to take note that the offerings and sacrifices of those who have allowed their temples to be defiled are also defiled. Haggai 2 verse 14 Father is going to bring down any obstacle that will come against us to prevent us in achieving our God-given assignments. No weapon formed against us will prosper. 
Isaiah 54, 17. And neither will the gates of hell prevail against us. Our work will not be hindered. Haggai 2, verse 22. Father's army will, during end times, be his signet ring. Haggai 2.23 We will have the power to bind things on earth and in heaven and to lose things on earth and in heaven. Matthew 16.19 Praise God! On November 24, 2022, the Holy Spirit had me ponder on what it was like for the Israelites during their time of slavery of Egypt how they heard about and saw the plagues that ravished Egypt. They witnessed death, terror, judgment, and destruction on a nation that wouldn't bend their knee and acknowledge the sovereignty of God. Pharaoh was controlled by the spirit of pride. He would not release God's people nor admit to God's greatness. This pride drove him to destruction. Meanwhile, in Goshen, God's people lived under God's protection, sheltered from all the plagues. This is how it will be during end times for those who are wholeheartedly trusting in the Lord's guidance and protection. While the world will be driven to turmoil, chaos, and devastation, God's people will stand, watch, and live in safety in a state of supernatural peace. Seek the Lord today and be sheltered by his righteous right hand. Psalm 91 verses 1, 9 to 12 and 14. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High thy habitation, there shall no evil fall befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he had known my name. The first four seals are wake-up calls, especially for those who claim to know the word of God. The first and second seals have been broken, and the third is following close behind. The fourth will bring with it unthinkable death by the way of four of God's most dreadful judgments. During this time, none of those who are considered righteous in God's sight, like Daniel, Noah, and Job, will be able to save anyone else but themselves. Please review Ezekiel 14. Due to the large amount of death, many will wake up and call unto the name of the Lord and be saved. They will become zealous for the Lord. This time of testing will be in preparation of the great persecution that will follow. Fifth Seal Psalm 144 Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight my goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones, polished after the similitude of a palace, there be no breaking in nor going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Happy is that people whose God is the Lord.